right, welcome back, everybody, to another G.I. Joe first appearance spotlight. I got Ben C. with me again, and we got a couple of books with a nice pile of characters for us to talk about. Just uh, some fun stuff. A lot of nostalgia still going back through these G.I. Joe uh, characters, and it's surprising how many first appearances you can find in some of these books that you just, you just don't know. So that's why it's good to have a resource like Ben's List over on comicbookinvest.com, because it tells you where the firsts are. If you're interested in that kind of thing, all free information and definitely useful if you're out digging in those boxes. So just give us a second. We'll be right back and uh, we're going to go into the books we have for this week. And before you go, hit the like button, sub up the channel. And we'll be back in two seconds. Absolutely. All right, so I guess let's see what books we got this week. The first book is, uh, it's kind of jam-packed. There's a bunch of characters in this one. This is G.I. Joe number 44. And, you know, it's kind of first third of the run still. But, I mean, look at all these characters. Airtight, Bat Troopers, Bazooka, Crankcase, Dr. Mindbender, Heavy Metal, and Quick Kick, who, yes, Shang-Chi. Bruce Lee, whatever you want to call him, G.I. Joe's answer to it all. Quick Kick is also in this book. And that you wouldn't be able to tell just based on the cover. No, you're just Lady Jane and up on the cover, exactly. which no, nothing wrong with that either. Early, early Lady J cover. But I mean, like you said, that's a full roster of, of relevant people. Relevant people. Airtight? Yeah. I always like this figure. He's it's cool. a fun figure. That's fun. All the figures are fun, but this was fun. Yeah, I mean, the bright yellow was kind of nice, but also just the helmet, the mask, he had like a pilot kind of thing. I don't know. I always liked him. I, I did always like, you know, like a, like this figure. But apart from that, the Bat Trooper was on the cover driving that truck. And I also had an affinity for this Bat Trooper just because it had those extra hands. Like, you know, it had a backpack that had, you could swap out the hands. Like, it was different for a Joe figure that was... Almost like a He-Man. It was a Masters of the Universe kind of crossover. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I randomly have a piece of the hand, uh, one of the attachments. <laughs> one of the attachments is sitting there. Beauteous. Uh, I don't know. Just a fun figure. I know it was an android robot, but you know, still, it's a lot of fun. Fun. I spell, out of all the BATs, you know. Yeah. Is... Exactly. And then Bazooka. Bazooka. He was fun because he had the the yeah his weapon was literally just like a, a, a miniature bazooka. <laughs> exactly, rocking like the football jersey. Like uh, he should have been uh, one of the Dicka guys on SNL with the uh, <laughs> with Farley and them. Oh man, I miss those. <laughs> I'm gonna totally YouTube those afterwards. <laughs> That's what ever makes me think of when I look at them. My like, God, oh, something about that stash. Got that Tom Stowe thing going. But Bazooka was another good one. I also love looking at the pictures of the figures and seeing like the old sale prices, like two ninety seven. Like you remember when toys used to be three bucks? Uh, yes. Good old days. Now I go buy my son something. And it's like twenty dollars to buy him a figure. And I'm like, easily, easily. Inflation. inflation. This guy took me a second because uh, Crankcase, I didn't immediately connect him with the vehicle, the Striker, which was a cool, like, dune buggy-ish kind of a Jeep thing that they had early on. And uh, I just didn't remember it. Like, it, I just didn't, you know, some figures with the vehicles, you like Wild Bill, you put him with the helicopter. Like, you just immediately remember the vehicle that dude came with. I didn't connect Crankcase at first, but still, he's one of, like, seven in this book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if you don't want to look at this book because you're not a big Crankcase fan, there's plenty of other guys you can like. You have other options. Like Mindbender. Like Dr. Mindbender. <laughs> Man, this huh, this guy is over the top ridiculous. Like he's running ass around like spraying people or whatever he's got going with his hookah. Like <laughs> the backpack hookah and he looks like that dude from the second round of punch out. A German <laughs> dude. That's fun. What a fun figure. His cloth cape is is impossible to keep from tearing, too. Yeah. yeah. Those toy collectors out there. I mean, this is a guy who's shirtless, rocking a cape. That's a look that not many people can pull off. 
not to say that Mindbender's doing it, but you add a monocle and you get that nice little Pringles mustache going. Then it's like there's so much going on. He's peacocking it to a point where it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mindbender. Oh, God. And heavy metal. Heavy metal's another dude. I remembered he came with this tank. This tank was kind of cool because it was a uh, motorized. You needed batteries. It would like this one was one of those early ones that could drive. That's fun. Yeah, definitely. That's, cool. I think there's two head. I think there's like a later version of heavy metal in one of the IDW or DDPs too. Probably. Confused. I think there's an updated or a different version of him, but this is. Oh, this there's, is don't last. there's usually multiple because don't, like a lot of these figures, they did a lot of those of. Uh, those lines like the tiger strike or the ninja fort, like they had separate lines like the night force or this, like they repainted them and sometimes updated things, but a lot of times there's repaints of the same figures, but those repaints and those later issues like that, those are tough figures to find. And those ones are uh, get expensive. Yes, they do. They definitely do. And again, our last and definitely a favorite of mine. I always like karate. I was in karate as a kid. So I always had an affinity for the martial arts themed heroes. So, Shang Chi and Quick Kick were definitely top of the list. That's awesome. He's a badass character. Um, even his card, like who wouldn't want to buy that off the rack? Like, <laughs> oh, and he comes with a sword just to like make sure he's extra awesome. Exactly, swords. He don't need a shirt. He don't need shoes. He's just gonna rock it like that. No monocle, but he's got a sword to make up for it. Exactly. A nice red sash too. That I always assumed that was where like ninja stars like in his, but I guess it's just the design pattern. But I oh, I always thought it was a Canadian flag, and it confused me. <laughs> Why is Good it covered in maple leaves? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so seven, seven first appearances in this book. It makes it one that I don't know. It, it, it's kind of fun. It's one of those things you. I like looking for in those cheap boxes if you can find them these days. But yeah, forty four. Forty four, eighty six, Marvel. Lady J and the Bat Trooper cover. Oh man, that was a good one. What's what's uh what's the other book we have for today, Pete? We got fifty eight. So mm. not too much further down the line, we got fifty eight. Fifty eight strong. I I really really like Jinx. I like the potential of Jinx. Um, from a collector standpoint, I just like the ninjas. Just Me too. It's fun, right? Like it's fun. I want to collect them. Um, from a future speculation view of somebody who doesn't want to pay a fortune for this down the road, I'm keeping an eye on the cheap $5 or less boxes because yeah. this feels like someone who's going to hit the screen with G.I. Joe. She might even be in, in two weeks. I don't know. Like maybe we just, that'll be like a sneak thing we get in Snake Eyes, some sort of, you know, tease towards Jinx. I don't know. Um, I can't wait to see that movie because. I know it's going to be different, but I'm still intrigued. It's G.I. Joe after all. And I'm holding out hope, too. Plus, look at that weapon. That thing's tough. Her weapon's awesome. Yeah, I agree. And the backpack's confusing. Mm. I'm like, I don't know if she needed the backpack, but... Well, that's so she can have the little swords to you know, come out with it, but... Come probably wasn't. <laughs> now, this guy's backpack was something else, too. <laughs> Raptor. The Raptor. His backpack was something else, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like cloth. The cloth wings they gave him was like, huh. Yep. It was a not backpack. Not as cool as the, you know, Superpowers Hawkman's wings. Definitely not as cool there, but we're going with a, you know, bird-themed guy. For some reason, I don't know why this guy fits in the G.I. Joe universe with them, per se, but the <sighs> eagle that came with him was cool, or the falcon, or a raptor. I don't, I don't know. Or the, yeah, or the or raptor something. that came with him. Yeah. Um, this was such a confusing figure. There's a hard metal center to the backpack, and then it's just cloth with two little holes to stuff his thumbs into. Yeah. No weapon. That's it. Here's your bird. Here's your bird and your <laughs> weird ass helmet that's like in the cartoon, it's like that's elevated, man. Like Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, not uh definitely not uh translated as well from figure to like a screen, but no, it the is what it is. The art's great. The cartoon the art is great. I always like this dude, Tunnel Rat. 
just I dig it. I dug the look, the camouflage face paint. He just looked tough. There's a guy I always put. He was part of the squad. Whatever squad I was putting together, Tunnel Rat and that big machine gun, they were going along for the ride. Even if I didn't take the huge backpack they gave him, because I don't know how you go through a tunnel with like a, you know, big camping trip backpack all the whole way through. You think it'd be more leaner and uh, more streamlined, but the machine gun came with him. The machine gun. That's all. That's all you needed. That's all you right? needed. Like. Great figure, absolutely great figure, great character. Um, yeah, I mean, what more can you ask for, right? Crazy Mail machine away gun. refrigerator Perry. That's what you could ask for. Look at the bottom of the, the card there. <laughs> that figure for the for the toy collectors out there. That figure is uh, that's like 50 60 bucks raw with the hammer. Really? Oh, yeah, I, I had a fridge. I had a fridge. Oh man, crazy, crazy stuff. And so. on the cover, we got one last first appearance in this book. I know you saw him. It's that new, new Cobra Commander. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Definitely a different look for him with his armored uh, scuba gear kind of thing going. And I know we were talking about it before we started this, but that tube always came out. That tube on his helmet always it wouldn't stay. It wouldn't stay. No, and, and, and you can only find this figure complete by buying the damn sealed pack. But yeah. as far as, yes, it's the same Cobra Commander, but it is 100% a first appearance because this is a whole new look. This is what Peter was talking about earlier when you get updated characters later in the series. This isn't Cobra Commander with a different color, you know, gloves or this or that. This yeah. is a complete overhaul. Welcome to the 90s. Have some. And I don't think it is actually 90s, but... No, no, but it's definitely a revamp look. I mean, he had to try to, I guess, keep up with the uh, Serpentor, I think, at that time, when he was taking over his... Uh, over all of his minions and whatnot. But, yeah, this is definitely one that I think warrants to say this is a first appearance. Because, again, yeah, it's a complete redesign. It, it is... Almost feels like a different character, even though it is the same character. But... That's another fun one. Yeah, another fun one. 58, 1987. Good cover, too. So, before we get out of here, I'm going to ask everyone to hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you want to make sure you catch everything that happens on this channel, hit the little bell. You'll get notified every time Peter drops a, uh, a video or a stream or anything funky and fun that happens here, you'll know. Exactly. And then once you've done that, head over to comicbookinvest.com. Check out the complete first appearance list. You have something for us to add? Did we miss something? Something you want to see on the future show? Let us know in the comments right here. So until next time, we appreciate you guys stopping by. I got one more tease before we go. Oh, one oh. more tease for people watching this one. I'm we may be mixing in some of the other first appearances that you can list. You know, all those first appearance lists over on comicbookinvest.com. We might be mixing a couple more in for fun uh, over here on the site. Just, I don't know, keep an eye out. All right, guys. Later.